Tom and John, how are you? Great, Brian. How are you? Thank Not you. Not too bad. Um, Tom, start off with a question for yourself. I mean, you've had such a kind of long and distinguished uh, career, both on stage and in film. I'm wondering, um, did you impart any advice or give any kind of guidance to the kids? Did I give them any guidance? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. They get, somebody once said, uh, oh, you don't, we'd be upstaged by children. I said, oh, it's much nicer than being upstaged by some actors I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> They're not doing it on purpose. No, I love being with them. I, I didn't have anything to offer them except my uh, affection. Sure. I mean, is it a case of just, I suppose, let them find their own way or was it just the opportunity didn't arise or how did it work? No, I think there was quite a lot of improvisation from them. Sure. I think Morgan encouraged that. And they do such sweet things. And if you pick up on them, you know, as he has, and you often get a little one, a little reaction of the little one listening and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think the improvisational aspect was good. Mm. Um, they, you know, and they are yeah. lovely children and they, it works very well, I think. With them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's very, their performances, I think, were, it didn't seem quite so steady. Like it seemed quite natural, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering for both of you, I mean, were you, ha, had you seen the film, I, saw, I suppose the original film from the 70s, I mean, had either of you seen it prior to signing it, on to the film? I didn't see it till I uh, agreed to be in the new one. Right. And I thought it was lovely. Because I knew Lionel Jeffries and I thought who directed it. And I thought it was very charming, and wonderful music and uh, Jenny was glorious as the young girl. Mm -hmm. so How are you, John? It made me even happier that I was going to be in, in this one. Although mm -hmm. there's additional, you know, the additional thing of the racism in the new one, which mm -hmm. appealed to me actually, because I'm quite worried about America. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I had I'm not alone. Yeah, no. I mean, I. It's yeah. It is frightening for sure. And I mean, I think I don't think people realize that this was actually th that the the armed services were actually segregated so thoroughly, I guess, in the UK during World War II. I didn't realize about any of that. No, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. But it was so. Yeah. John, I mean, did you watch the film when you were growing up? I mean, do you have any memories of it or anything like that? I have a very clear memory of watching it one Sunday afternoon in my parents' house when I was probably five or six, I think. And I didn't watch it again for years. And then, then when I, I heard about this film, I rewatched it because I knew that I was going to be uh, the descendant of Bernard Cribbins' character, so I'd, so I, I, it was a case of me watching it and trying to work out which which traits of that character to pick out, which to kind of uh, you know build into my own uh, creation, my own performance of Richard. But I think it's just one of those films where the original is one of those films where you tell people that you're doing a railway children uh, update. And their faces just light up because it's mm. one of those films that has, that has so people have such a place in their heart for it and such mm. affection for it. And you know, when you find out that people love the original so much, it, it, it it's lovely, but it also is kind of intimidating because you know that you're you're building on that lineage and you're 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 you know you're building the next part of the story. So you know, you know, the responsibility that you have to make it good. And I think what Tom was saying is so is so right. We found we found a way to well, I say we. We were very little to do with it, but but Danny, the writer, and Gemma and Morgan, they've they found ways to to still keep um, some of the elements of the original that people really have affection for, but also update it and build some quite uncomfortable issues into the story. And it's not just a a warm, cozy film that you can let wash over you. It's quite a challenging watch sometimes, and I think that the balance between those two things is really important, and hopefully will lead to a a successful a successful film. Yeah. I mean, that's actually, it's, it's interesting you kind of touched on that because and both of you did, in fact, I think, you know, trying to make a film that is, you know, very sweet and very warm and very kind of comforting and inviting, but then also having the harshness of racism and, you know, really trying to confront it in a meaningful way. I'm guess, I guess my question for both of you is, is how do you approach that in terms of performance or is it just something you kind of put to the back of your mind? Well, the, the racism thing appealed to me because I think it's still prevalent in America. <clears throat> and 
with my part, he's a sort of connection with America because he works in the Foreign Office. Mm. And so he says, you know, they took a while to join, but we, we're, we're side by side. And, and they, America saved us in two world wars. But there is this other part, which is emerging, you know, of late, mm. very yeah. clearly, which is not very nice. And so that's echoed in the film too. But it's resolved. I mean, it is a romance and it's resolved and the general gets out and he was, he's, he's a wonderful uh, Hugh mm. and, and, and solves it all. But whether, how realistic that is, who knows? But it doesn't matter. Yeah. How about you, John? Well, <clears throat> I just think, you know, because, because these issues, uh, the, the racism issue comes into the film a sort of the halfway point as soon as Abe's character is introduced and and, and the children get to know him. It's almost as if I, I, I personally didn't want to kind of load my performance with any sort of sense of that prematurely. Sure. It's almost as if you know my, my character is a, a kind of a comic turn. And in the early part of the film, you know, the village where we find our characters is quite an idyllic. Yeah, and, and it's and, and it's quite it's quite comfortable and it's quite cozy and life is quite slow and low key and it feels like a, a kind of idyllic place. It's only when you know Abe's character comes into it that these people are exposed to these these because it's almost as if you know children uh, and especially children that grew up in that sort of rural environment that racism probably wouldn't even occur to them. Yeah, because it's not something that they're almost so pure and so innocent. It's such an innocent place and innocent people. I think I think that. I tried to make Richard as as sort of as, as pure and as earnest and as and as uh, innocent as possible yeah. in order to create that landscape into which these big unpleasant uncomfortable issues are introduced. I think that 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 balance is watching these kids go on that journey of discovering what racism is having not been exposed to it before. I think that that's quite an interesting thing to watch play out. Yeah. For sure. That's brilliant. Okay, um, getting the wrap up there. So uh, thanks so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Cheers. Hey. You can make a difference. There's always hope. <laughs> Friends are special. They're with us, side by side.